We have a quorum. Thank you very much, Clerk King, and welcome to everybody. Um, glad to see some um, smiling faces. So I'm not so smiling, but hopefully we'll get there before the evening's over. Um, we're going to, we'll, we'll be getting with the continuation. We're beginning with the continuation of April 1st board meeting. So with the continuation, please. We're good. Okay, we're going to continuation of last Monday, April 1st board meeting. Uh, that meeting was concluded early because the because there was no access for all people that wanted to come in. So we felt that this space will accommodate all of the residents that want to come and attend. We feel it's important that people have access to have communication and talk to the and talk to the board on, and, and share their thoughts. Uh, so we want to give special thanks to Dalton Park District as always. Uh, we have our president, Cleo Jones, or the commissioners, Sandra Wells, Commissioner Powell Rochelle, Commissioner. Gail Towers and Commissioner Willis Harris, they're, they're towards the back, so please give them a lot of love. I want to make sure. Uh, support and and really the the direction that we that we would like to. Terms of partnership, in our eternal gratitude for uh, their partnership. Uh, so what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to start because prayer is important. So we'll, we'll first start with the pledge of allegiance, then we'll go prayer, then we're going to reconvene where we left off in the last meeting. Uh, if we can remain standing briefly, I'm going to ask the former trustee, Valeria Stubbs, my prayer warrior, if you'll be okay with uh, leading us in prayer, please. Can everybody bow their heads? Heavenly Father, I come to you and I thank you for another day. Thank you for allowing us all to come to here together and don't have to stand out in the cold when you invite us. Thank you for giving us up this morning. Thank you for the, the four tough seasons that have our best interests at heart. Father, I ask that you put your loving arms around this community and anybody that's not doing your will, remove them from the seat. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you and give us traveling grace and mercy on our way home. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. So we're going to reconvene and pick up on point number five, which was general announcements at that point, but where we <laughs> continue to meet. Crazy. First, there are, as we may know, and if not, I'll make sure we're clear, there's two, there are two agendas. We are continuing the April 1st agenda, and that's where we're picking this up. Once we reach the conclusion of this agenda, we will adjourn this portion of the meeting and then go directly into our special board meeting, which is the second agenda. So just so everybody has, kind of has a heads up on the direction we're going. Uh, so for general announcements, I'll yield to any trustee if there's any general announcements. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, we have a special surprise today, and um, we don't take stuff lightly that goes on. Um, in Dalton. So I know a lot of people see stuff that's happening on YouTube, on Facebook, and different things. The reason I'm standing up because I seen something on Facebook last week that really struck a nerve to me. Um, we are not responsible for what our police officers do. We will hope that they would do what's in the best interest of the community. But the video that went out with um, Miss Hill getting put out and that baby crying really touched me because it was like you were ruining a special moment for a little child. So today we wanted to make sure that he won't look at Easter so in a negative way. Miss Hill, are you here? Come on. Miss Hill. Chicago Jew in the building. I don't think they knew either. Um, 
Hit that like button, bro. We under a thousand likes, bro. We should not be under a thousand. There's two thousand people here. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Good evening, everyone. Saturday, April the twentieth, is the Cook County Business Day. The Cook is also to help families reconnect with missing. With missing loved ones, who should attend this missing person's death? Family and friends of a missing person more than a month. You should attend this. Is at the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office, 2121 West Harrison Street, Chicago, Illinois. There is a RSVP number. Where you can get vital information this Saturday, right here in this building in this location, 9:30 a.m. We have an awesome time. It gives the rest of the time to ask questions and get answers. So this is a Q&A session. It's not a uh, at the board meeting where the residents ask a question and then we'll see you later. Definitely Saturday, we're asking everyone in this room to please come out and attend. See what the trustees is every second Saturday. Firm okay. audits in the building. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, we have been hired in today and hosted by Senator Napoleon Harris, April 22nd. It's at South Suburban College from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. So if you have any old items, uh, recyclables, shred papers, medicine, they'll be able to do that from 1 to 3 is the right here today um, on April 22nd. Um, also, uh, Trustee House, when we get a chance, can we uh, have a moment of silence for Cook County Clerk uh, Karen Gabbard? Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that, Trustee Belcher. I'm going to take Trustee Lori up on the floor. Good evening, everyone. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Everyone's warm inside. Okay. Um, I just have a public announcement. So, we do have um, our third annual state family state night. Um, you all know my saying, those who the family who stays together, stays together, okay? So come on out, uh, it's June 7th, um, it's that Friday, it will be held in Linwood Skateway, um, on 2030 Linwood I Road, right there in Linwood, uh, come and join us. Feel free to register, please, if you are a dog resident, um, it's totally free, and I would love to have you all, as usual. Um, call me, 708 or 297 or email me at uh, norwood at um, Oh, and just a bonus for this Saturday. I know Trustee Brown invited you all out. Uh, we do have a bonus this weekend for the seniors. Um, we do have the county coming out and for all the seniors who need to keep their senior exemption in place. So the taxes, come on out, uh, bring your, your tax form, and we're going to make it a one-stop shop for you, right? So we're going to do everything in one place. We can fellowship and take care of you at the same time. So please join us. Thank you. Sorry, I have one last minute. Uh, the South Lane Career Fair 
It's going to be April the 24th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And it's going to be Hill Charles Recreation Center right down the street here, 715 April. If you're looking for a new job, creating new opportunities, and trying to advance your career, grab your resume and come prepared to make your best first impression. This is an opportunity for seasoned professionals and entry-level applicants to meet with recruiters face-to-face -to, -face to learn about open positions. All are welcome to attend, and this career fair is put on by Dawson Park District, Senator Napoleon Harris, and Neighborhood Council Services. So you can definitely see me after the meeting um, if you want to. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. We have uh, next on our agenda is the, is the village clerk's report and approval of meeting minutes by the date of the 13th. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I am requesting the board's approval of the regular board meeting minutes from March 25th to the 25th. So moved. Second. 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 Okay. Trustee Lobo. Aye. Trustee Sandy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Thank you. Uh, there are several reports on here that we do not have um, department heads or individuals present, so we will be skipping village administrator's report, engineer's report, uh, department report, police, fire, public works, water, housing, building, and code enforcement. And we'll go next to our warrant list of uh, payments that we were that we need to approve. Um, in doing so, I'm going to make a motion that we approve the, the electronic AP warrant list, removing the following items <coughs> Aurelio's Pizza for $131.63, Cooper's Hawk $557.68, Dollar Tree $145.32, Food for less $107.99, Irie Jerk Cut $1,356.22, Johnny T Bistro Blues $90.30, Turks barbecue. The answer is no. And Ruby, Ruby Soul Food, $74. Sophia Somali Corn, $2,400. Southeastern State Supply, $17,500. And the Taste Crab, $458.79. To approve the warrant for this, removing the items listed. Thank you. I'll ask for a second. Here a motion is second any discussion from board. Trustee Lee Roll call. Trustee Lowe. Aye. Trustee Kenny Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion passed. And so the next is the okay. approval of our account payable warrant list. Um, I motion that we approve the warrant list, removing the following items. Page five, Delgado Law Group, $48,001.15. Existing concrete, $14,123.03. Five Star, $122,325. Even. John's Pro Tree, $155,000. Even. KM M Ventures, $183,950. Even. Lopez Lawn Maintenance, $10,050. Mazda Design, $65,700. The Karski and Sons, $32,360. Raul and Sons, $181,950. And White Coat Pool Solution Crisis. Yeah, the Moscow design was the 122 battery for $19,888. And also the uh, $65,000 for the Christmas ornaments that still come on night. So those are those two. Uh, Voices and as of last week Friday, they still have not been paid. And we were told that the check has been sent out. I talked to the vendor Friday, no payment for the battery, nor payment for the principal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just like to reiterate um, if anybody watched the March meeting when we had discussion about these items and uh, uh, the $65,700 came up. If you go to one hour and 35 minutes, our finance director said that the items had to be paid in cash. 
and we're still waiting on the receipts. And if they haven't paid in cash, why is this vendor still contacting us asking for payment? So when people go and say things, everything is recorded. And it goes back to our transparency and lack thereof, and we're not getting information that we requested. Because as soon as she said it, I instantly raised my eye. When we start paying $65,000 in cash money, and then for this vendor to contact us, Telling us that she hasn't been paid really draws concern. Where's the money? Thank you, trustees. If there are no, no additional comments, I'm going to ask for people to roll call, please. I have heard some passive residents contact me over the last few days. So I know one of the voices in here uh, was for the seventeen thousand dollars for skates. Um, this is part of the reason why we have to dig so deep into this because once before um, we did vote on skates and Trustee Belcher asked the administration where the skates were located so that everyone can have access and she basically was told that it's not her design. So when we look into something like the ice skating rink, I want everyone to know that um, as trustees, it's not that I'm um, not available to get ice skating. But when the residents say, well, well how much is it? Well, when is the operating hours? Um, these are the things that are a concern for us. And this is what we mean when we talk about transparency. Um, we need to have this information so when we can tell the resident, well, it's from this time. It's not fair that we spent $1.3 million that wasn't approved by the board on this ice skating rink, but the ice skating rink can be only accessible when the administration want to use it for their private events. It's just not fair to the residents, especially when we're using taxpayers' money. So um, that's my stand on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, hearing no further discussion, I'll ask first people roll call, please. Again, who has voted for Parker Hill's AP warrant list, with the exceptions that Trustee House mentioned? Trustee Norwood? Aye. Trustee Kenny Brown? Aye. Trustee House? Aye. Trustee Belcher? Aye. Motion passed to pay AP warrant list with the exceptions that were mentioned by Trustee House. All right, next on the agenda, there's no old business. We go to new business. Item A is a motion to terminate contract for Olson Murphy, Frazier, McGrath, and, and legislative council. I'm also going to make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll ask, is there a motion to terminate the contract? Hearing no motion, that, uh, that fails to proceed. Next on the agenda is a motion to override the mayor's veto message that was issued on March 4th, 2024. Sorry. I am going. I will make the motion to override and elaborate. If we have a second, do we have a second? For clarity, this motion is to override all items listed in the veto. In that veto, it listed it vetoed item one, the transferring of litigation files from Delgado Law Group to Olson Murphy, Frazier, and Graff. Item two that was vetoed, uh, referring referring the Delgado Law Group to the appropriate agency for misconduct, essentially. Uh, item three, a motion to the, the motion to approve payment of, of invoices owed, specified invoices owed to Olson Murphy, Frazier, and McGrath. Item four, the directing the village administrator to provide access key cards to the trustees so we can have our meetings in the village hall. And the clerk as well. Item five, directing the village administrator to make payments on, uh, to tender all payments made to the village for any reason, including Las Vegas junkets, the mayor's Tahoe car payment, and security deal from January, June 1st to present. And those, and those were issued have been no. turned over within seven days that had not, that had not occurred, and that was vetoed, and now we are here to override that. Item six, all monetary payments to Delgado Law Group will only continue in his capacity as village prosecutor, which is what he was originally approved for. Item seven being the discussion and approval of the intergovernmental agreement the board approved with Dalton Park District. Uh, that intergovernmental agreement was put in place so that the Park District can get the permits needed to receive a $600,000 grant to beautify the park. 
that was vetoed, and we are here to override that today. And last but definitely not least, item number eight was the approval of resolution 24 that zero two, which called for the investigation of Mayor Tristan Henry. <laughs> Like button now. We're supposed to be coming together. Um, my 17 year old, he attended uh, the Dome Park summer camp for like four or five years straight. I mean, it's a wonderful place. It was a nice place for the summer for him to have something to do. And these are the type of things we want to support, not just as a trustee, but as a resident. I want other parents to experience what I experienced. Um, my son got to the point where he's like, okay, mom, I'm just getting too old. But now that he's retired, I'm looking forward to seeing new youth there. Um, and then secondly, he mentioned the keys to Dome Village. Um, that was extremely important because it brought tears to my eyes to see that at the last meeting, we had our schools standing outside in the cold. Um, I don't know, you know, I don't make much mention of it, but before the lecture, I was running um, that December before lecture. I lost my grandmother, and then uh, two, three months later, I lost my great grandmother, and I lost them both for civil election. But what was funny is that God worked in mysterious ways, right? I lost two grandmothers, but God gave me about a hundred more. And um, when I see my grandparents standing outside, it, I was, I was kind of upset, right? This is our village, and we all should have access to it, not just the trustees. I mean, we're all one deep, one sound one community and I think that that's the most important thing that us as trustees are just trying to get through to the community. We're all one. So if you all can't come inside the building to conduct the meeting, guess what? There will be no meeting because there is no meeting without the president. How do we discuss business pertaining to them without you all? It, that would really make no sense. So I just want you all to know that um, we did hear you all and see you all and that was the reason why we're here today. So now that you all are safe and sound and you all have made it today, I just thank you all for showing up. Thank you all for your support. And um, we're going to get those keys to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. thank you very much, Trustee Norwood. Any other discussion at this time? Okay, hearing none, I will ask uh, our key for a roll call. Item number 13B, override of the mayor. Issued on March 4th, 2024. Trustee Norwood? Aye. Trustee Kim Brown? Aye. Trustee House? Aye. Trustee Belcher? Aye. Motion passed. <laughs>
like to so as I transition, I just want to make sure I'm calling the next meeting to order in the proper manner. Attorney Bolson to no, Attorney Bolson on that one right there. Trustee House, the uh, next meeting is a special board of trustees meeting called by uh, three members of the board pursuant to the uh, code of ordinances of the village of Dalton for matters that pertain to the agenda, which is the newly uh, issued and posted uh, on the Google Maps. Okay, so the okay, so we'll go right into roll call. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so we will we will dive right in. I we see black. Uh, I see black in the building. Item A will be removed. Uh, we did not get sufficient documentation to proceed with the discussion on updated state of Illinois rock salt contract. So that will be pushed to another agenda. Items B and C. So for item B and C, I will make a motion to amend item B, 5B, and 5C to appoint Lori E. Lightfoot as special investigator to the village of Dalton at a rate of $400 per hour to investigate the following matter. One, the May 2023 Las Vegas trip, including all expenditures, all allegations of misconduct, and all internal investigations, if any, along with any village, state, and federal law violations. Two, the spending of ARPA funding without going out to bid and or failing to properly spend ARPA funds. Three, failure to provide a full accounting of all ARPA funds spent. Four, hiring contractors without going to bid or requesting the RFP. Five, six, five, hiring the contractors without the approval of the corporate authorities. Six, making payments to vendors without the approval of the corporate authorities. And seven, Paying the village prosecutor they've got involved with over $900,000 over the last two and a half years. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do a motion. And I'll, I'll make that motion. I'll ask for a second. We'll go into discussion. Right. Uh, I made a motion. Second. 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 Hearing the motion and second, first I will uh, ask Attorney Olson to uh, further dive into the resolution. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, on the original agenda are two resolutions. Uh, uh, hiring Hit the like uh, button. Ms. Lightfoot as uh, additional legislative counsel. Uh, I received a letter today uh, from the Delgado Law Group uh, threatening uh, me and the board. <laughs> and if we proceeded along this route, uh, there would be litigation and uh, grave consequences. Uh, <laughs> advising that uh, any actions we do here uh, are uh, in violation of the Open Meetings Act and against the law. Uh, I mean, remind you, this is the same Dundalva group who uh, we just received the invoices from the last two and a half years, including March, will be uh, over 900. Uh, so rather than rather than fight another lawsuit and spend more money on more lawyers 
we amended the, uh, the motion tonight. Uh, the resolutions were to appoint uh, Ms. Lightfoot, uh, and that's what the motion uh, is. Uh, and rather than appoint her as uh, legislative counsel, which is our, our title, uh, roughly as a special investigator is, is, uh, is more than appropriate. Again, we're looking to get down to the facts as to what's going on in the village and how the money is being spent uh, or not spent. So rather than uh, fight over this in court, we uh, amended the motion. Uh, people are here tonight because they know on the agenda is the proposed hiring of uh, a very learned uh, former federal prosecutor uh, to help the trustees sort out what's going on in the village over the last two years as far as uh, misappropriation and mis misspending. That's why we amended the, the, uh, the agenda as stated to try to avoid yet another law. Um, thank you, Bert. Thank you, Board. Um, at this time, uh, it's my privilege to introduce Lori E. Whitefoot, <coughs> who most of you uh, I'm sure are familiar with, who she is. But what you might not be familiar with is uh, her, her background of professional. So I'd like to just read through it, and then Ms. Lightfoot will step up and then make a brief comment. Um, Ms. Lightfoot graduated from the University of Michigan in 1984 with a bachelor's degree in clinical sciences. She's also a graduate from the University of Chicago in 1989 with a very doctor's degree, uh, she has a very teacher in law degree. Uh, she then worked as an assistant U.S. attorney in the criminal division for the Northern District of Illinois from 1996 to 2002, where she prosecuted a whole slew of different types of criminal cases, uh, but notably she uh, prosecuted cases that involved public corruption. She then worked uh, or was appointed the chief administrator for the Chicago Police Department Office of Professional Standards uh, in that capacity from 2002 to 2004. She was chief of staff and general counsel uh, for the Chicago Office of Emergency Management and Communications from July 2004 to February 2005. Uh, she was active, I'm sorry, she was acting first deputy procurement officer for the City of Chicago Department of Procurement Services, February 2005 through October 2005. She's a past president of Chicago Police Board from 2015-2018. She was co-chair of Chicago Police Accountability Task Force in 2016. And as we all know, she was uh, the mayor for the City of Chicago for a four-year term. Uh, with that background, I would like to introduce Gloria Schleifer. Like trust 
of those you serve. And making decisions in their best interest is absolutely essential. The residents of Dalton deserve nothing less than a government that is fully accountable, responsive, transparent, and effective stewards of your precious tax dollars. As a lawyer and former federal prosecutor and mayor, I bring expertise in leading investigations of this kind and understand the complex challenges of government. I would commit to you that I will follow the facts where they lead without bias and reserve comments um, from this night forward until the work is complete. At the conclusion of this investigation, I will provide an assessment of the findings and the recommendations and I welcome and urge the full cooperation by Mayor Henyard, her staff, all village trustees, vendors, and others who have information relevant to this inquiry. Thank you very much. Because in, in general, we want to get feedback and because of the nature of the urgency, this process is going to before we take a, before we take a formal vote, I don't know any questions, I don't know there are many questions, there were many questions and uh, some I feel that we may have answered and some may not have been answered. So if there are any questions from residents, we're going to take questions on this agenda item only at this time. We will follow with public comments, which can be open to any discussion. But we want to make sure first that um, we do not let haste um, bypass the process that allow residents the opportunity to speak. So having said so, having said that at this time, I will ask if there are any questions that residents have that we may not have answered, uh, that those may maybe come line up towards the middle, and then we'll uh, entertain any questions at this time. Ms. Mary getting in line, Mr. Lee getting in line. Into the mic. Let me preface my comment by saying thank you, Lori Michael. Thank you. So I wanted one of the questions is um, because we know that this is going to cost, right? Um, and I'm all for it. Was there another option such as, you know, some of the assistance we've gotten from the governor perhaps or congressman or any other appointed official that could represent us at no cost? Yeah. Um, thank you very much for that question. Um, and yes, this does come at a cost. Uh, this board specifically has made reaches to the state's attorney, attorney general, governor's office. And as we know, there are ongoing, well, it's been reported that there's ongoing um, investigations from federal entities. Uh, those entities, as we know, can take anywhere from two months to five years, and, and we do not get the findings. Uh, we feel this option will give us um, an independent process because, because we will, from this point forward, we will step back, allow Mayor Lightfoot to do her, to do her findings. There will be check-ins primarily to make sure, and then the resolution, there are, are check-in points to make sure that we do not uh, that the bill does not become insurmountable. So there is a check-in point at thirty thousand dollars, and then we would we'll assess cooperation and where we're and where we're towards going, and make decisions from that point, including the community, on how to move forward. Separately, we do we are also going into the next budget season. May, May first comes a new fiscal budget, and the board of trustees fully was already in the planning process to seek a forensic audit as well as investigation to put funds in for that. Uh, 
Uh, so that's the funding that we are seeking to use to go towards the, the incident. Thank you for all the questions that I had on this list. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. Good evening, I guess I should say. A lot of the questions were just answered. And I spoke with Jason and I reached out to a lot of the citizens. And I said, now is your opportunity. Talking to each other is not the answer. If you've got a question, tonight is the night to ask it. So if you do, think twice about getting in the line. My question is this, and thank you. I know she's going to do a good job. We had a little private conversation. <laughs> Female conversation. Anyway, um, what happens with the information? Do, I know you probably got a pipeline. Troy, what's happening? You know, to get it to somewhere. I'm not putting the business out there because I don't really know. But we just want to know that once we get what we're looking for, what happens next? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, and what the board does next depends on what the contents of the report is. Let's go. We have tried lawsuits. All he has done is uh, rack up more, more attorney's fees. We have tried, as, as Mayor Pro Tem House said, going to the proper hey, really? authorities. Uh, and as every day goes by, and you heard tonight from Trustee House how many items were removed from the agenda for payments, and the village loses more money. So the bleeding has to stop. Uh, hiring a mayor like what you're doing. A prompt investigation will lead the board to where they need to go as to the next step. Thank you. Good luck. Committee to the citizens of Dalton, greetings to uh, all the officials at the uh, Dias here and media. Um, is it uh, appropriate to? Address the questions in real life, is that okay? Or should I address everything to them? Is that okay? Okay, gotcha. Hey, you're my boss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I understand you have some uh, experience with the police board. You have this. Speak up. I'm sorry. Um, real life, but I understand you have some experience with the police board uh, in your resume. Uh, we have a very serious police situation here. <laughs> Dalton. Uh, a very serious uh, problem. Uh, it's gotten to the point where what just happened would have gotten immediate, would have gotten all of us kicked out of here if we were at the meeting last week, which by the way, I'm still shaking water out of my shoes because I was out there for two and a half hours. Okay, and as well a lot of other people. But we also have a situation where they're taking police police off of the streets and bringing them in to ride herd on people, citizens, taxpayers that come in here to ask legitimate questions. That uh, police are being used to blockade streets. I just want to be assured that if the police come into this to, to the degree that we've seen, uh, can we be confident that and you can take this to the proper authorities. Basically, I'm asking about subpoena power for some of these things. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that subpoena power will be part of this because I haven't seen anything else work up to this point. Um, I'd also like to address a, a national issue that we don't want to bring here to Dalton necessarily. Uh, we've seen the smear jobs on female prosecutors, and I don't have to mention any names, but we've seen the smears and the attacks on female prosecutors throughout the country. Uh, I'm sure you're prepared for that, but I just want to make everyone aware of the fact that the things that are happening nationally could very well end up happening here. And that will not derail the investigations, but distract and deflect on uh, all kinds of attacks on people that do not want this uh, situation to move forward. So, uh, Thank you for your indulgence. I just had a couple of questions. I, I don't want to get personal with anything, but I just need some answers as far as those things are concerned. Well, let, let me uh, thank you, sir, first of all. 
And let me address the, uh, ooh, it's here. Let me address the first, the last question. Um, look, I've been in a lot of uh, different situations over the course of my career, and certainly as a lawyer, as a prosecutor, um, and even as a mayor. Um, and anybody who knows me knows that I don't intimidate easy. Yes, when you're a black man, the world of you is a different lens. Um, and particularly when you're a black woman who aspires to leadership, a black woman who assumes um, a position of authority, there are lots of people who are going to be naysayers. I never let that um, derail me. Uh, if, again, if the, I don't want to be presumptuous, but if the trustees vote for uh, this appointment, I can assure you that I will block out the noise, I will follow the facts where they lead me, and I will be um, guided by the motion and the specific items in that uh, that I am required uh, to address. Um, I can't say that on the first issue, that that's necessarily within the scope of the mandate that I expect to be given, but I hear you loud and clear, and importantly, your elected officials, I think, hear you loud and clear, and there are, there are clear things that can be done to address the issues that you identify. I hope that's satisfactory answer. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, to the board and to those. And I'm concerned about Dalton, and I do not want history to repeat itself. When I think about how Tiffany Hinger got in this position, it is very bothersome. And I don't want that to happen again. So for the ex mayor of Chicago, we want to first make sure that you do not have a personal relationship with Tiffany. If I have seen pictures with you and Tiffany on them together, we want to also make sure that there's a bait and switch like it happened with Tiffany. Tiffany made all these promises. We thought she was going to do this, we thought she was going to do that, and we in this position. So no disrespect to you, but we want to just make sure that we're making the right decision and that history does not repeat itself. Well, sir, um, again, thank you for your questions. I don't know specifically what history you're talking about. Um, I, I, let me just finish my, my point. Um, I honestly know uh, Mayor Henry as I do most of the mayors in Southland, um, having been the mayor of Chicago. Not surprised that you're going to see a picture of me. Ms. Henry takes pictures with lots of people. Um, so what I can assure you is I do not have any personal relationship with her. And frankly, I don't have a professional relationship with her. I think the last time I had any contact with her was probably three plus years ago, um, right after she was sworn in um, as mayor of, of Dalton. So um, I'm not surprised, and I raised this issue, frankly, proactively uh, with uh, the trustees and uh, council, but I, I value my reputation and my integrity. Um, and I I would not have taken on um, the contemplation of this assignment if I felt like there was any conflict. Again, to follow up, what I said was not to shoot and insult you. No, I, I, no insult, no offense. Um, let's take might have addressed the question. Um, so I think we should move on. To address your question, it was just where did I get that from? And I said, hey, Which did not be me personally, it was just simply because how Tiffany got into this position. That's it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. A, a, a very necessary question. So uh, thank you for that question. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor, for your response. Uh, yes, Good evening, everyone. Yes, sir. Like the abundance of everything that I've been hearing about. So, to the board, I don't know how to start. Thank you. To the wonderful residents, 
And I'm going to stop. And I'm going to raise that up after y'all have missed all. We deserve until you run through a taxpayer. Thank y'all for not turning into just the donors and the members. We're just eating out of here. But right now, this is what the full bang of unity looks <laughs> like. Have any other community that's going through this? Y'all got to do the same thing. Let us all waste the power. If everything was easy, we know how that would go. And once again, we keep saying her name, Alexis Wilson Darius Wilson. We keep saying a young man that had his life taken. We, we, we just don't have a despair anymore. We don't have a despair like that because that's what it means. We cannot replace another life, not one person without, you know. And to anyone that is seen that the one thing I know is, you know, get to take us back to a child to change some things. Thank you. Y'all have a one for you. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. We will also be opening for public comment after this one, uh, for after this component, because we still do have the official vote, but we do want to make sure uh, individuals can have a question on the board. Mayor White, good afternoon. Hello, my name is Gloria Johnson. I am a 26 year homeowner in resident of the city of the village, the small village of Dalton. And the question that I'm gonna ask, I wanna know, anybody gonna know Jim? <laughs> Real talk, for real. We're asking for transparency. We ask her questions. When she asked, when you asked her questions, she did And then uh, when you guys took a vote, she walked out and she, she started talking about the meeting. So I want to know who does that. You know, this is a really, really small community. I'm from Chicago originally. The 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 I'm from Inglewood, and the proud member formerly to be from Inglewood. This is a very small community. We see each other all the way in school, right? Down the school, uh, everywhere we see each other in the town. Uh, and I just would like to know what is going to be done. Even about <laughs> the police business, stand in front of you in a side like you were the front. And the real criminal is the mayor. With the, the, the ratchetness, I mean, it's just really, and you give them your address, you say, y'all say, Illinois? Are you friends with that? That mayor? I never, I never seen anyone that's from that little town. What is going on? A lot is going on here, but I want to know what we're going to do about it. She has wonderful ideas. I even took part in some of the ideas she did. You know, uh, the Halloween party was beautiful. Her attire wasn't totally offensive and inappropriate. I've been watching the police. People who want to sit up here and talk, who do you think that I'm going to be shot up? You know, it doesn't make any sense, but I understand that the woman was here and I can keep the bottom of my heart from being here. The board is here. But what are they going to do? The residents of Dalton. Sure. To the, to the, the, record. Next, the next meeting we go to, will they be there? Can they not be Long there? Long Island Audits is in line. Just, just to uh, quickly address what you said, uh, this body, uh, Norm Mayor Lightfoot, uh, have, have uh, 
criminal functions. In other words, we can't bring the actions in the criminal court. What we can do and what uh, Ms. Lightfoot is being hired to do is find the facts. And once this board, through the reports that we get, have the facts, the facts can be turned over. Appropriate legislation in the village, we're supposed to govern the village. Uh, we don't uh, indict people or we don't criminally go after them. As far as the police goes, uh, I believe that once the facts are flushed out and whatever happens to the two trustees who don't come and the mayor, uh, I believe, based on my experience in municipalities, that that will straighten itself out also. It's just, it's just that I'm sorry to say you're going to have to wait a little bit longer, but we're not fine. We're on the right track. Well, oh, the police to be, I want to know the police in general to be straight now. Uh, yeah, so the investigation itself will provide us information that we can share with other authorities. Um, and that's the direction that we need to go. Thank you. Thank you. Just to reiterate, um, this is just lead, and we have to conduct the business. So right now, this is only discussion about um, hiring uh, Ms. Lee. As citizens, we've done FOIA requests for a number of different issues. <laughs> that have not gone, we haven't gotten the information that we need. And I understand the history, I understand who you are, but what makes you different than every other citizen who's requested information? Because at the end of the day, She's going to stonewall you, and she's stonewall the citizens. And it's going to be a part of this because I'm hoping you'll get results. But at the end of the day, we haven't gotten results from simple FOIA requests. How are you going to be different? It's a great question. Um, and what I will say without, I think, giving away all of my strategy and strategy that we need to. <coughs> By him, this is the trustees on the assumption that I'm appointed. Um, FOIA isn't optional, it's mandatory. And I recognize that uh, people put in any number of FOIA requests. Um, I'm not expecting, I'm expecting that there will be some roadblocks, but ultimately, I'm expecting that we will get the information that's needed to be able to understand the breadth of uh, what's been going on based upon the issues that are outlined uh, in the motion. I mean, very determined person. And I think, um, with due respect, the thing that makes me different um, is having dealt with Florida for years and years, and certainly um, a significant amount during my tenure as, as mayor. Um, there are certain things that I think can be done and should be done. Uh, people who have power and oversight in the state over Florida. I hope, hope it doesn't need to get to that, but if it does, then so be it. I, again, I had like earlier remarks. It is to hope um, that Mayor Hendrick um, and people in her administration uh, will um, volunteer, cooperate, but then we are prepared to do necessary to get to the facts. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sparkle Cornell. I am a 16-year resident of Dalton. My question is, after we take the vote today, we go ahead with this life book. What happens after that? Because what I don't want to see is another veto and we go down this rabbit hole of going back and forth. When does that stop? When can we stop this going back and forth and get something done? So, you know, it's the obvious that a veto will happen. 
and but we have the majority. And the four of us sit here and don't take this lightly at all. Because I knew it would be pushed back. We knew it would be, we all said the same thing that all the gentlemen just said. She's not gonna give you nothing like she don't give nobody else nothing. But at the point where we override the veto, we are we are committed to making sure that whatever we can assist with Ms. Lightfoot to get information, you gotta understand we're bleeding right now. And bleeding leads to death. And this is death of a community. And we have to stop it. So yes, it will be a, a veto. We we know that it's coming, but we know that we have four people that will sit here and continue to fight for our community and override the veto. Okay, just uh, one other comment. Uh, if the board uh, uh, affirmatively passes the motion tonight, uh, Ms. Light will start tomorrow. And, 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 uh, <laughs> if, if there is to be a veto, then so be it. We'll deal with that, but the investigation will not be impeded after tonight. <laughs> greetings, greetings. Uh, I want to message to tell us. I want people to realize not to be elected officials going to open up the floor to unscripted questions. You don't know where it's coming from. That's called transparency. That's called good government. Please give them a round of applause. Because none of these, these questions, we have, nobody was playing in the crowd to say this, say that. They weren't paid to come up here and say this. They're taking the questions on the chin and answer. So that, that goes a long way in government. I just want to say that. So my, my question is just, I'm an independent journalist. Um, I came into Dalton to investigate and to cover what's going on here. I've been threatened by the Dalton Police Department. They threatened to put me in a jail cell. They, they've, Chief Lacey has personally pulled out handcuffs against me and threatened to arrest me. Why isn't this investigator being tasked with the job of investigating the police corruption? There's no police officers here, but at the last time yes, they were you know, very aggressive with the residents here. And why is it this investigator investigating the police department, which seems to be very corrupt? So I'll answer, I'll let, I'll let attorney hold well, As we looked into it, there's there's a two-pronged thing that we're trying to do. We, we want to get answers to the, the questions that are out there. We also have to monitor in terms of cost, how we, how, what direction we want to go in. Uh, we most certainly, and I'll say certainly because of the point, the point of opening this point portion up is to make sure that we're getting feedback from the community. So as we hear more, we can further amend this agreement to expand it into the police department or anywhere that the uh, community wants to like us to go. Who's really wanting us to get the police department? And as such, we need to ensure that that's what the people insist, that's what we will do. Hello, Mayor Herman, for It's such an honor and privilege. I've been watching everything online and tonight I decided to come up. But one of the questions that I have, after you conclude your investigation and the board turns it over to you, elected officials, what happens there? That's the first question. And the second question, haven't you all already submitted the information to the officials? That's a very good question. And what we have has been turned over to the appropriate authorities, but we don't have everything. And we don't know what we don't know. And what we don't know are all, all of the FOIAs that have gone, gone, gone up the chain that the village of Dalton has been sued for and has, has had to pay out money because the FOIAs have gone unanswered. Uh, the mayor took the, uh, from the clerk, who was the FOIA officer, took it out of her hands and it just run through her. If the trustees get no mail, all the mail goes through the mayor. Uh, I can go on and on and on. So 
we, we've turned over what we have, and we will then turn over what the report says we don't have and should have. So thank you. At this point, to your my left, we're going to conclude the, the questions. I want to um, further yield to more any board members, any comments or statements we have at this time. Y'all ready for us to call the roll? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, we got the call for all. I just, um, I'm, I'm really just passionate about this. And um, like all of us said, we talk to each other, and it takes prayer. It takes uh, us un, unapologetically making sure that we are doing the right thing for the people. Yeah. And um, I was talking to one of the trustees earlier, and I'm just going to say this. I was a little bit upset with the community. And I'm why. We started this journey two and a half years ago. We did a recall, and people were like, oh, we just five people that got up on the and don't like her. And we now $7 million plus in debt. And it was a little because I said, did they, did they not believe us? We seen it. And we've reached out to all of these people that want us to go and vote for them, Attorney General. Vote for them, yes. State's Attorney. Vote for them, Governor. Yes. They will not vote, but will not help us. Right. So when we do this, we're doing this for you guys. Me included. But we're doing this because we have to take a stand that the information is not given to us. We have to have someone else come in to try to. Now we, we said the same thing. Now what? She ain't gonna get up. She ain't gonna give up nothing. But maybe she has more authority to get what we're missing to yeah. seal this deal and take our community back. Yeah. 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 So, okay. <laughs> Okay. Everybody, uh, everybody don't feel it. For the record, everybody don't feel it. Um, here's no further discussion. Just close. Sure. Um, this was motion by Mayor Pro Tem House and Trustee Belcher that we amend agenda items 5B and 5C to appoint Lori E. Lightfoot as special investigator for the village of Belton at a rate of $400 to investigate matters read by Mayor Pro Tem Justin. Trustee Hunt, Mayor Pro Tem House. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion passed. Sincerity, um, your feedback and comments mean the world to this, to this board. So we want, so we wanted to break from the norm to make sure that we listen to everybody. We heard everybody. We heard things throughout. Um, uh, th there was a resident who called and kicked my butt. She kicked my butt. Said, "You have a how are you going to vote on something and the people haven't heard? I haven't had a question. I have that, and I had to pause and say you're right." You're 100% right. So it was Miss Mary. Make sure that it was Miss Mary. We can to incorporate the feedback from the residents, and that's um, it is, it's critical. So that uh, goes a long way for us. Uh, having said that, we do, but we do still have public comment as the final item on this agenda. There is a, uh, I will ask for a three minute. We, we recognize the frustration, we recognize uh, the limited. So I, I say a soft three minutes. As your three minutes comes, I will 
away from home, just kind of as a reminder, you know. Um, no, uh -huh. two minutes and no more outbursts. No more outbursts. Yeah, well, we're going to get a public comment. Two I'm minutes. The house is probably talking about me. We did have that conversation. Uh, oh, but earlier, and my take on is it's good with the residents, it's good with me. Again, we work for you. So collectively, it's what the residents want. Is the faith of uh, the direction that the board going? Thank you. Good evening. My name is Stanley Wright. I've been a Dalton resident for three years now. And I would like to ask, uh, y'all mentioned about the commissioners earlier. Uh, could y'all bring them up so I can know who they are? I'll ask the Park District Commissioners, please come forward if, uh, if your heart so desires. Uh, one of our constituents is seeking credit. Yeah, I see you. Uh, yeah. Any Park District if you'd like to come forward, uh, we do have a hit that like button. Make sure we hit out. that like button. Oh, yo, yo, no more outbursts. Uh, yeah. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. President Jones in the very back. Wave is saying there. I see. Mainstream Mr. Mr. media. They yeah. leave and they don't I see get the Commissioner Sandra Wells. And which department? Man, the mayor's uh, security almost got hurt, bro. Uh, kind of we don't have to talk about this thing. He asking for Stacy. Just saying, I do a field every month, three every month, right? But I don't know if this resonates with everybody, but we pay mortgage and we have people to come and reach me. Why do I get a letter telling me to read my own meter? I don't understand that. I'm paying you to read my meter. And my water bill is high as some people living in my home. Uh, but we are working community. We have, I work every Monday through Friday at 8, 8 a.m. To, to 5 p.m. They work the same hours. I'm not at home to come in for you to let me in my house. Why don't they have somebody on Saturday from 7 to 12 or something? I don't understand. Uh, okay, so two things. Uh, maybe. Okay. <laughs> so um, if you have an estimated water bill, um, we do have an ordinance that says that they should enter your house once a year. So if you're not available, then you should try to schedule a weekend, um, a weekend estimate so someone can come in because there is an ordinance that says once a year. If you do have a circuit water bill, if um, after this meeting you want to stay and speak to me, then we'll get your information and try to get it handled. Okay. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tara. Wilson. Say her name. Mother of Alexis Wilson, killed by dog, Illinois police. Um, as, you, as you've heard, a running theme has been fear of the police. And on that evening, my daughter feared the police. She ran and they killed her. Um, the unedited body cam still has not been released. The only thing that's been released is a, an edited body cam that they tried to spin a narrative on. Um, I, I, I'd love to have that whole body cam released to the public. Links on the screen. Um, I think that needs, there needs to be an audit of that. Um, those <clears throat> officers struck my daughter with a 52 seconds, two punches to her face. And in one video I've seen, it looks like he punched her with his flashlight in his hand. After the two punches, she took off. But as she was taking off, there was a cop entering the right side of my vehicle. 
As that car takes off, both vehicles more of a close. As the news, the mayor and the police reported that she aimed her car at cops, she drove two cops, and then she drove two, she, she was shot by the cop that she was trying to hit. None of which was true. None of it was true. In three minutes, that child had seven bullets in her, two on her head and five down her side. He executed her from my passenger seat. He wasn't hanging out of anything. You can see that in the video, but people still look at the edited video and find fault with the way she acted that evening. She was a 19 year old girl defending herself. She had every right to do so. So I'd really like to have that. I, I tried the FOIA request and I've never gotten anything back. And I know that's not your fault. Um, those are being blocked. But I'd like to have that whole body cam released and I'd like an audit of that body cam. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Sherry Griffin. Alexis Wilson. Um, Alexis Wilson. The board knows I'm passionate about uh, Keith Freeman. Um, I know it's hard Keith to do something Freeman. with the mayor slash supervisor, but these employees, as ignorant as some of them are, um, today even calling Village Hall, the phones were disconnected. This is not the first time that's happened. You, they want you to pay your bills. They, they send you these Black crazy and water bills, like the gentleman was saying. Um, you could even call this morning to try to make arrangements to pay the crazy water bills. Um, but again, I think that we need to start pursuing something uh, to do something about these employees, uh, specifically Keith Freeman. He has access to. Uh, employees, residents, records, uh, finding out was a former employee. So he has access to my personnel file. Um, you can't trust people like that. Um, what are we doing? I mean, last uh, week's board meeting when everybody was standing outside, I was outside. Um, that's crazy. What are we doing? Has anybody talked to them about that? What's going on with that with Lacey? Of violating the skills, uh, rights, and just mm -hmm. all types of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is the conversation? Has there been anything? What's going on with all of that stuff? As far as, you know, like, they just did it and, and nothing. I mean, it's like the police, they just, they're just outraged. I mean, it's like, Jesus Christ, come on now. Something has to give. I mean, it's bad enough we can't do anything about her, but we should be able to do something about them. Everybody is replaceable. You can't tell me that Keith Freeman, not a village employee, but a 1099, whatever he is, you can't tell me you can't do anything about it. He can just come in. I don't care if he's appointed every week if, she, if he's fired or somebody needs to go public and say he needs to be gone. It just has to happen. The same thing they did with Dorothy Brown needs to happen. With him, at least say it because this is ridiculous. I, I can say for myself, um, I was here and I was a big up board member. Um, I am not a fan of, 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 if you go to the board meetings, you sit there and you're leaving a watch staff in the way that they speak to elected officials on the board. So um, I feel that anybody who's been disrespectful should be, though, should be terminated and gone. Um, legislatively, hiring and firing is not within our purview, which is where we run into a lot of challenges. Uh, we have one of some of the items that we listed on here, and we just over over here. We'll see if there's any relief. And we say relief is a lot of times they come to report, and we try to do a cost benefit because it is worth going through that process um, to do this too. So I'm just going to take it a step further. But I think I um, know uh, Trustee Tammy Brown has made some very vocal um, statements as well. I think the majority of them want to speak on it. He'll have the same thing. He's got to go. We can't, we can't do Y'all about to get the performance of y'all life. I'm sorry. 
Good evening, residents. My name is Gerald Williams. I'm a 35 year resident of Dalton. How did we get here? Let's talk about the election. During the primary, Tiffany won by what, 103 votes? 120. Even better when it comes to election. We got, what, 20,000 20, people in Dalton? We had, what, Twelve, what, 8,000 people that voted? Not even 8,000 people. We have to do better. And with Tiffany, you got to do your homework. Look at her when she, she was a trustee. She had property here that should not have even been occupied. But who does she know in the village that gave her an occupancy? Uh, registration to, to put somebody in the house. Okay. KS dollar back. She she went on Roland Martin. And he asked her, would she be open to an investigation? She said, yeah. Anything that would help her clear her name. And what does she do? She goes and she vetoes. Them. So, you, you know, we we got to come out and vote more as a community. Because we like 21,000 and 8,000 people, and y'all falling for it, we got to do better. That's all I got to say. Good evening. I'm John uh, Gallagher with the company Gallagher Asphalt. Here uh, just today to talk about a stack of invoices that we have for the city. And I'm sorry if I missed that uh, early on and got voted on, but uh, we've got, um, we've been doing work for Dalton for about 95 years. And I feel like we've always been a very good partner with Dalton and just looking for that reciprocation back to us as well. So uh, 2023, the street resurfacing program, uh, we still got $615,000 hanging out. Granted, I think a lot of that is coming from uh, the Cook County. Uh, so we'd just like to know when that might be paid, and then also for all the cold patch repairs, I think that's about twelve thousand or thirteen thousand dollars now. Uh, yeah, we would like to keep supplying to help the streets um, of Dalton. So, if, if I can, I'll find a specific month. Your invoices have been approved by the board of trustees already. Okay. Uh, that was just, uh, as I read off the list, people that were not um, approved because they were not in the budget. Your invoices have been approved, I believe. Most recently, there were a couple of them that were uh, approved today, but the previous um, the previous invoices have been approved months ago. Okay. I'll get you the specific dates if you want to go after the meeting. Just stick around. I'll, uh, I'll find out what those dates are. And then also, what a lot of times we do is we email our board that email over to the finance director, the village administrator, the mayor's office, specifying when the bill has been approved, which month of the year, and then that way asking them to probe a little bit deeper and talk. Gives you documentation that has um, been processed, approved by the board, and um, assisted in your undertakings. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> to you. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what the luck needs to do. Miss Valerie Stubbs. I'm taking her out, bro. <laughs> See, y'all fucking up. Get it right there, girl. There we go. Good evening, everyone. I want to, first of all, thank the residents for coming out. We have been fighting, fighting, fighting for the last three years. I want to thank the trustees and the clerk for the awesome job that you do. And I, I have a question because I'm tired of getting phone calls telling me that they're being harassed by the police. I've been harassed by Mr. Lacey, too. But I can deal with Mr. Lacey just like uh, Ms. Lori Lightfoot said that she knows some things, I know some things. So my question to you guys is, Sylvester Baker, what's this wrong? He's an investigator for the police department. And who or who do we investigate? Oh. Oh. 
Oh, damn. Oh, damn. So, um, he was hired to investigate everybody in the municipality. But um, when it was brought up before, it's uh, there was an issue that came about um, with the caretaker of personnel. Um, he was he was told, and I have an email that they he only investigates the police department. But um, they kind of been using him back and forth to halfway investigate whatever they need them to at the time. So my thing of it is, if if you go to work every day, and this is especially for the men, you go to work every day, and at the end of two weeks, you come home without a paycheck. What do your wife do? She put you out. <laughs> so my same sentiment is to Sylvester Baker. If Sylvester Baker, and I know we go back a long way, but you know, enough is enough. And if you're not doing your job, then that's another one that needs to be put on the list to, so we can save that money so we can pay Miss Lightfoot. Thank you. Good evening. My concern is the village departments, like the water department. I live on the street. Every time it rains tremendously, the street floods and look like a river. That's been going over 10 years. When I first moved down here, it was mostly the village and all the workers were Caucasian. They came out and flushed the sewers so the water would go down because if you don't flush the sewers, and that's the water department, I have not seen that done in over 10 years. My concern are the water department employees and their accountability and who makes them accountable in doing their work because we pay our taxes and our village village fees for those services. Secondly, our streets, we get bumps, but we don't have lines, we have potholes. Yeah. I live up near Dorchester, Kenwood, and the line. I go southwest, you can ice scale on your streets. So I don't know what department declares that our streets need repair and new pavement and new lines so you know what side you're on. But yet, they have a camera up that says you turned the corner when you did turn the corner. That's more important than servicing our village so it doesn't look like you're running down into the alley somewhere. And in fact, in front of my house, sewer, you know, on my side is a sewer. Then I saw it one day going all the way to my back where my head just says another sewer. So I'm really demanding, not asking, demanding, because I've been out here too long, too. Stacy. Flush out, get the sewer workers flushing out those that's sewers. Crazy. I have friends that work at the water recreation room, and that's what you're supposed to do. Have those sewers flush out so our streets don't flood out here when we have heavy downpours. Thirdly, I don't know who's on the police department, but they're rude and they're very disrespectful. I had an incident in my neighborhood. I went over there. The officer told me when I complained, I'll write up a report if you pay me $10. I just walked out. I didn't say anything. Sir, I can what? Work. I have a master's, city certificate, all that what? stuff. You don't need to tell a person how if how I'll write the report up if you pay ten dollars. Who's all these departments need to be accountable, and they need, need to, you need to have people that do balance and check. Everybody needs to be checked when you're working for a village and for people. Everyone has to be accountable if, if they're in administration. Thank you. Good evening. Hi everyone. I don't know how y'all feel, but I feel good myself. Amen. I am happy. I've been living here for 20 years and nobody has never seen me before. <laughs> oh no, I haven't seen none of you guys before in my life. And I'm right here. I'm a homeowner. I pay my taxes. Good to meet you. And I am a senior citizen. I'm 67 years old. Oh, by the way, I'm Jay Jones, so my 
So, that's Jay Jones, y'all. Ignore those people on the internet and YouTube because they all have their opinions, but they really don't know Dalton. Dalton is a beautiful city. I told a gentleman this before I got in here. I said, what I want to move for? I might move somewhere from hell. It's everywhere. You have to be thankful, and I want to tell the village of Dalton, we are still shining. We might look like we're in the dark, but we're not. Stay strong. Give a good heart of mind. Thank these trustees. Yeah. I love them. Yeah. <laughs> they are awesome. And they are fighting for us. I stand with you all. Yeah. All we need. That's right. Jay Jones. Let's go, Jay Jones. Hello everybody, I live on 144th and Mervyn, and we need some speed up there. There's a uh, uh, apartment complex around the corner that they That's where I'm at, Bradshaw. And they have loud music and everything. I'm going to know how high this speed must go on my block. The, um, there, there was, and I'm saying was, there was an application process for the mayor's office had decided uh, yes, so uh, we could do an inquiry, but it's, um, uh, it's probably pretty doubtful because the administration has not been responding. Oh, okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Jedediah Brown. I'm an advocate mainly in Chicago, relocated to Texas, and I got a call. I have got several calls to come and to assist the people of Dalton. Uh, but before I do that, I want to once again, I have been an advocate for over 13 years fighting for our government and police department, and I've never seen the body, the building of the board. And I want to just commend these trustees because last meeting they stood up for the people and they did not allow you all to be this happy. I was honored to be a part of them. Well, yeah, make no mistake, I didn't just come here and insert myself, I was called. And this is the part that people don't know. Regardless of what's said about me before I came, I prayed. I did not forget the way my parents raised me. No matter where I go in life, God is still in control. Amen. And so I want to say this, I don't mean to take y'all to church, but I, I listen to the comments and I listen to the questions. And I just want you all to recognize the moment. Whenever you pray and God say go, that means you're up to something. And when I got involved, I have uncovered things that I think, in my own opinion, that are not lawful, but are also unethical. It would take great Charles to see it as they say, right? So it's just a matter of time. But what I've learned is if you suffer with God, you reign with God. And if I am suffering and calling on God, eventually he's going to respond. And so as soon as I, and there's a lot of information that I'm going to be unearthing in the coming days. But I want you all to hear me so that we don't mishandle the moment. Lord Lightfoot is going to start work tomorrow, but your work doesn't stop. This is the moment when this is talked about in every crevice of the village. This is the moment when we're not going to go and get to know our neighbor because there will be an election coming up. And I want you all to hear me. This is my personal feeling because I've talked to elected officials, residents, and all kinds of people. And I'm not lying to y'all. Most people say, Get a guy, why are you wasting your time with those people in Dalton? Let them handle their situation. Hear me. The Bible says that God will do the foolish thing that profound lies. And when you think what's significant, you got like, I'm the exact and the perfect candidate for a move that God is behind. And so what I want to say, people saying, well, what happens if she be told this? And what happens is that it don't matter what she does, because the Bible also says that when two or three are gathered in agreement, he said, I will be in the midst. So what am I telling y'all? That if you guys begin to organize your block, your community, get in the barbershop, go to, it was a place I learned about today, I think it was Angels. 
They was up in their happy hours. Let's go to happy hours and talk about the Navy. But if you all begin to organize now, she, it's only a matter of time. You can't block what a, a woke, organized people and the guy behind them is trying to do. So what I want to tell y'all today is that a lot of information is getting ready to come up. And we can we gonna go through the process, but if y'all don't stop, we won't stop. Because everybody who thought Donald was insignificant and too small to care about, now I see people saying, let's do like the people of Dalton and let's stand up for ourselves. I want to commend y'all for doing just that. Put the caps in the chat. Appreciate all the comments at this time. Uh, we'll include this in his comments. Who said it's an address? And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Here, motion to second. Motion to second. I'll ask Kirk Key for roll call, please. Trustee Norwood. Trustee Tammy Brown. Trustee House. Trustee Belcher. Meeting adjourned at 8.07 p.m. <laughs> Regina Walls. Regina, Regina Walls. Right. Trustee Brown, can I get a comment, please? Oh my God. <laughs> Trustee Brown gave me a hug, y'all. Can we get a public comment? Can we get a public comment? Absolutely. This meeting tonight definitely, definitely has put us back back on the right track and it starts tomorrow so look out everybody thank you so much for your prayers your love and support Dalton will be back on the map so thank you Amen. thank you trust So we got to boost your numbers up. Don't do it. I know you do it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate it so much. You just don't know. Huh? We, we love you. It's, it's 1500 right now. We love you. We love you here. I appreciate it so much. We will be back. Yes, look at everybody. See? Look. Thank <laughs> you.
So I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Thank you guys. And I'll see y'all tomorrow. Y'all have a good night. Thanks again. See y'all later. Make sure y'all put the likes, share, and also you can comment. But thanks again for tuning in. Holla at you.